Well, howdy do, buckaroo. So, this Friday, my wife and I decided we needed to get out of town. So, we took a drive to Rockbridge, Missouri, which is about an hour and a half from Springfield. So, the Rockbridge Trout Farm, as you can see there. We stopped at their restaurant there where I had that Rod Scream Ale, <laughs> along with the uh, smoked trout appetizer. Comes with the dill, cream cheese, and onions, and some crackers, as you can see. It was just fantastic. Um, it's just a, a really interesting place, kind of an old deal. Unfortunately, there's a picture there of the grist mill that we're just about to see, but it wasn't open. They do have some rooms there that were open and available, but because nothing else was open, we decided to, you know, keep going. So we drove down into Gasville, Missouri, to Nima's Pizza. Um, I mean, Gasville, Arkansas. My wife just heard the guy meant to say Arkansas. I said Missouri. Anyway, they're they're famous for their pizza, and they've won international awards. But uh, they, as you can see there, they had an Italian sausage sandwich, and their special was lasagna. So my wife ordered the vegetable lasagna that they make there fresh. It's a little different every time because they work with whatever ingredients are there. And that plate was about seven bucks. And right there is my Italian sausage sandwich. And that thing was amazing. And how do you do? It took me a little bit to get in that place. <laughs> anyway, how the heck are you? I am Tom Beer Whisperer. I've got one that I picked up the other day. My wife and I were taking a day trip, but I'm not here talking about specifically about the beer because I already did a video for that. But I wanted to use one from the trip so I talk about what we did. Uh, but it is a West, they call it a West Coast style IPA, 6.7%. I didn't look up on the internet to see what the uh, IBUs were. Main Street 4204, two hop IPA. So there you go. It was nicely though. Let me show it to you. Can you see it? It is pretty. There is no doubt about that. Kind of a, I don't know what color you'd call it. A, kind of a cloudy golden or beats the hell out of me. But anyway, it looks all right to me. It's got a nice little head there. Oh, again, they refer to it. As a, as a West Coast IPA, they say dry floral hop notes up front with a clean citrus hop finish. It does. There's also some peppery notes I noticed yesterday when I tried it for the first time on the nose. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. You certainly get, I feel a lot of apricot right there in the middle before it goes into all that, all that big citrus and tropical fruit notes. But let me tell you a little about our, our weekend, I guess. Uh, so uh, we both got some news at the end of the week that left kind of our, our work life a bit uncertain. <laughs> but, kind of, you know, a little bit unsure. We don't know what, what, how things are going to shake out. Uh, so, knowing my wife and knowing how she tends to internalize everything, I knew she was going to fret about it all weekend and, you know, go back to work more stress Monday than she left uh, at the end of the week. So, I talked her into going, uh, going away on Friday, and we didn't know if we were going to spend the night somewhere or not, to be 100% honest. We just packed a, a small bag. Oh. Uh, Basically, extra unmentionables and a toiletry bag, just in case we decide to spend a night somewhere. So we decided to drive to a place called Rockbridge, Missouri. It's a trout farm, but they also have a they have some some lodge or some lodges or a cabin, and they have some hotel rooms. So we thought, well, let's check it out, see see how it is. And, I, and the funny thing was, I called them to make sure everything was open, and they told me it was. We got there, the restaurant was open, but it was only open till 7. They did have some hotel rooms open, and that's really because nothing else was open. They have a grist mill, uh, we call grist mill club, kind of a bar area, uh, but it wasn't open yet. They don't open, it doesn't open till April, so I was a little bummed about that. So because there was no, there, there was, there was no store for about 30 miles in the joint, and we would have had to have gone and got a few things if we spent the night there, there was nothing open. So we thought, well, what the heck, we're just going to keep driving. So we'd heard of, <coughs> excuse me, we'd heard of a place called Nemus Pizza in Gasville, Arkansas, which is roughly about 45 minutes from where we were. So we thought, well, what the heck, let's just take a drive and 
then we'll see, you know we'll see what happens. So when we went out there, and, and they're they're famous for their pizza. They've actually won international competitions. Uh, oddly enough, neither one of us ordered pizza. They do sell pizza by the slice, but we talked about doing that. We talked about getting a small pizza and splitting it. Uh, but they had lasagna, they had a lasagna special, either a meat or a veggie lasagna, um, and they make everything there. The sauces, I mean, everything's made there itself. And the, the young lady that helped us in the first place mentioned that the veggie lasagna is basically kind of different every time because. Uh, I can't get that where I want it, darn it. The, the veggie lasagna. Basically, they just use what's what's available at the store. Oh, screw it. I'm just going to take that down. It's just not working for me, man. <laughs> so anyway, so we, she so had the veggie lasagna. A uh, comfort food for me for a lot of reasons is Italian sausage, or more specific, an Italian sausage sandwich. Uh, my dad, who did not eat a whole lot of ethnic cuisine, Almost everything was meat, potato, vegetable, but he did like an Italian sausage sandwich. So, anyways, I wanted the Italian sausage sandwich. We got the lasagna, I had the sandwich, and it was, oh, wow. I, <laughs> uh, I haven't posted the video. I've, I've uploaded it to YouTube, but I haven't made it public yet. And I did some pictures of her lasagna and, and my uh, Italian sausage sandwich, and it was just, it was just, just amazingly good. So I stopped taking a drink and talk about a little beer. Oh, go on with the story, man. Oh, yeah. There, there's something there. Uh, I, again, I, I, I'm certainly feeling some apricot there. And then you get a, a whole lot of citrus or certainly some grapefruit and some various tropical fruit notes. But there's something peppery in there that I, I'm not quite deciphering. It's almost like wet pop with the white pepper notes. So I, I skipped ahead a little bit, actually, now that I, uh, see, I got ahead of my story a bit. So when we were at the trout farm, actually, we did eat lunch at the restaurant. Um, there was something that we wanted to try, but they didn't have because they're not, you know, um, they don't have the full menu because, uh, you know, it, it's technically out of season. But uh, so anyway, uh, but they're known for trout. So and we weren't super hungry. So what we did is got the smoked trout appetizer. It was ten dollars, and we split that. It comes with six ounces of trout, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but once you brought the plate over, it looked like a whole lot of trout. But anyway, and it comes with a uh, dill cream cheese, and um, a red onion, and some some crackers. So, uh, but but that was fantastic. That smoked trout was oh, and I love trout. I really do, and that, and that was just just fantastic. I'm certainly getting a little pineapple now. And there's probably those other suspects, mango, papaya, who knows? I'm not, I don't know a lot about those flavors, to be honest. So when I taste something I'm not quite sure of, I always relate it to that. But I mean, you're going to have to try it to be sure. The bottom line is this was about eight and a half and six pack. It's a uh, 6.7% out of Belleville, Illinois. It's a fine beer. I, I do recommend it to my friends. I don't know if a lot of them are going to find it you know, West Coasty enough. You know what I mean? I mean, a lot of a lot of West Coast IPAs, you know, are about seven percent. Some better than that. Some at seven and a half. So, and many go from seventy to seventy-five IBUs. So, I, it always boggles. You know, it makes makes me scratch my head when someone tries to do a West Coast IPA, but they do it much smaller. So, and, and the critique on them is always the same. Well, it doesn't quite get there. I think they would have been better off if they just called it, you know, their IPA without without that West Coast description. I mean, they don't necessarily call it a West Coast um, in their, you know, in the title of the beer, but they do put it in their description. I really think they ought to left that out. But that's my own personal opinion. Oh. So you might notice that I typically, well, uh, during the winter, I've been doing a lot of my videos out inside, you know, a picture on my TV as a backdrop. Uh, but we've had such a nice day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We were gone Friday. We came back Saturday afternoon. Um, and I did a couple outside yesterday, and I went outside for a couple. I mean, it's not, you know, toasty warm out here, but it's pleasant. Uh, so anyway, from Gasville, uh, 
we will get tired actually to be honest with you well first of all we thought we might stay at that that trout farm first right uh, but circumstances kept us from doing that and then we were getting tired and we thought about stopping in gasville um even though it's a dry dry town dry county i was okay because i had some beer i was you know i didn't sweat that uh, oh excuse me uh, uh, but then last minute we decided well we kind of press on the next town was harrison arkansas so we stopped just shy of harrison and i found a liquor store that i can i'm darn if i can remember the name of now and i feel bad because it was a, a nice place didn't necessarily have a great selection but it had a nice selection and but the people were very friendly in there so there you go but i found two moody brews half seas over imperial ipa and sixes and sevens Imperial Belgian style chocolate porter. There you go. So here's the thing. Um, I don't know, about a year and a half ago or so, I had I, tr I was able to try the Moody Brews half season over, but hey, I don't have my own bottle handy. I know I saved one, but I don't know where it is at the moment. Um, but I, I was sending, we were messaging each other back and forth over Moody Brews Brewery. He had seen my video and commented on it, and it, it was, you know, he liked my video on it. But I wish there was a, a Little Rock Brewery, and, and that's where we found it. And I know they were opening a brewery there at the time. They weren't quite open when we traveled there in September of that year because uh, I was going to visit. But they were somewhere, you know, in the downtown Little Rock area. So I was surprised to look at the bottle and, and see brewed and bottled by Krebs Brewing. So I don't know if Krebs bought out Moody Brews or if they were always a part of it or or if you know, I mean, I don't, hell, I don't know. So anyways, I was a little surprised, but uh, so I, when I poured one yesterday, I didn't realize there was a lot of, you know, stuff <laughs> in the bottom. So I poured it rather aggressively. So if I get to this one through during this video, and I don't know if I will or not, I grabbed a, grabbed three beers just in case because I didn't know how long I was going to talk. But, uh, um, but there was a lot of stuff in the bottom. So, uh... It says it uses hops from both hemispheres. So when I pour this one, I'm going to pour it a little more careful. So hopefully I won't get all that stuff in there. Because the, when I got to about this much beer left, I was having to chew. So anyway, we stopped there. We're getting into Harrison. And, uh, we just decided for a few personal reasons that I don't want to get into. <laughs> Not, not to stay in Harrison. So we kept going to, and my wife has a friend that uh, has been mentioning a place in in uh, Hollister, Missouri called the Black Horse Pub. And it used to be something else. I can't remember. We thought about staying there once before and it was a pub and there was a hotel. So well, let's go check that out. So we went there and that pub was hopping to the band. Uh, just getting ready to play, I think. Uh, but the pub was already pretty close to full. I thought, okay, this is going to be cool. Had a nice lobby that you could sit down and have a beer in too. So that was a big, great place to do some videos, you know. Uh, and I had planned to do a, you know, one of my live pub videos that night. So I thought, well, this will be awesome. But then we get into the hotel part, and she tells us that uh, the hotel portion of the place doesn't actually open till next weekend. So okay. So here's the thing: we looked at staying at three different places in in decided not to, right? So we uh, were, were two other before this one, and the reasons that are out of our control, we had every bit of booking the room there. They didn't have a room for us to rent. So now we're not sure what we're going to do, to be honest with you. I mean, at this point, we're only an hour from home, so we could have just kept going and went home, but we really didn't want to, if you know what I mean. You know, we both were kind of, we just needed to decompress a little bit. So, so anyway, we're starting there wasn't a, a parking place close to the Black Horse. We parked. It wasn't that far away, but it was maybe the equivalent of about a block, you know, maybe a block and a half. So, so we start walking back to our car, and, and on the way somewhere between the, the Black Horse pub and our car was a salon, and they're, they're, I guess they were just getting ready to close up shop. And the lady was walking walking out, and uh, she just asked, asked something about uh, the pub or something and and uh, i said well we were going to stay there but they're not open yet so my goodness i didn't know that i thought the hotel was open um 
So she said, where are you going to stay now? And he said, well, to be honest, we don't know. I guess we'll have to go into Branson, but we really didn't want to, you know. So she said, College of the Ozarks, the uh, College of the Ozarks is called Hard Hard Work U. Basically, they, they, they have various jobs there that... Um, in in many cases can be part of your you know your your major or whatever you're studying uh but um anyway she says uh they have a hospitality program so they have some some hotel rooms so we went there and kind of well why not let's just check it out see what they have and the drawback was <laughs> once we got there well, I kind of figured to be honest but because it is a college campus there in the bible belt but uh we get there, you know, it's a no smoking, which I don't smoke anyway, but it's also an alcohol free facility. But at this point, we're both getting kind of tired, and quite frankly, I didn't need anything to drink anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'd only had one beer all day, I wasn't drunk, that's not what I'm having today, but I, I just, you know, I didn't necessarily need, a, need one, so, or want one. So we decided to, to book the room, and then we get up to this room, and holy cow! <laughs> And I did a video where I, uh, no, I actually didn't do the video yet. I think about it, but I, I've got some pictures ready. That I'm going to put a video together. Oh, the place was just fantastic. It really was. Um, it was one of the nicest rooms we'd ever stayed in. Um, and for the money, it was incredible. Uh, they uh, they do a turndown service, and they leave you these homemade uh, cookies. I believe they were oatmeal chocolate chips because they were fantastic. And and they have a creamy creamery little creamery. They're on site. They make their own ice creams and stuff. But they they bring you milk and cookies, milk in a glass jar, you know. And, and I don't like milk, to be honest with you. I never drink milk. And in the 21 years my wife and I have been married, she's never once seen me have milk and cookies. Not one time. It's just not something I do. But I did. <laughs> we have did we did when we did the pub video. Live, I was doing milk and cookies for the video because I couldn't drink in the room. Um, to be honest with you, it probably wouldn't have been hard to sneak something in them. It's not like they check, but I just didn't feel like, you know. And so and for the first part of the video, I had some coffee because they give you some fresh ground coffee. And um, then I had some milk and cookies in the video. So there you go. It was, it was awesome. And in the morning, they deliver you, uh, deliver right to your room, man. <laughs> they deliver you a, a, a continental breakfast. And they have, you, you've got two possibilities you could choose from. Um, one was a cranberry nut loaf. This is what my wife had ordered. It was a nice size. It was a little mini loaf, you know, about like that. Um, she said it was awesome. Um, and it comes with a mini loaf and then three small uh cups of fruit uh that's what she ordered i ordered it was kind of a it was basically greek yogurt and kind of a parfait cup i won't say it was a parfait because it wasn't layered but it was you know greek yogurt and a parfait style cup with uh strawberries on top and then on the side they give you this little deal with uh granola along with some honey um so you can put a little honey on the granola to make it stick together and you put it on your parfait and that's what i had and Again, I mean, I talked about not eating milk and cookies <laughs> earlier. I, this is not something I typically eat either, you know. But it was it was amazing. That granola was, wow, it might have been the best I've ever had. Um, so it was just it was just nice. The room worked out perfect. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We ended up, again, we, were, we, were, we get there, right? We're kind of, we get checked in. So we said, well, let's go walk around and check out the place, you know. And we weren't necessarily hungry. It was about, you know, Probably about three hours after we had lunch. Uh, I, well, I guess at that time, probably closer to four. But uh, we thought, well, they have a restaurant there that says fine dining. But I'm just wearing jeans. I mean, I have a nicer shirt. And I was wearing loafers, but I was just wearing jeans. Because we were dressed to travel, not to, you know, eat someplace nice. So, but we decided to go ahead with that. Well, let's just get something small. Hey, not to come all the way here and not try something. So, so we did. <laughs> Um, we got in there and sat down. Uh, the waiter was very friendly, very knowledgeable. Got a guy at the uh, the other end of the dining hall playing piano. So it was just a beautiful experience. And so anyway, the waiter was telling us the dinner features, and one was a 10-ounce smoked prime rib 
that came with the, the vegetables with that night was a, a squash, summer squash. I believe it looked like yellow squash and zucchini and um, and a baked potato. And, and like I said, my wife and I weren't extremely hungry, so we just got that to split. I mean, five ounces of prime rib was fine, and it was it was just amazing. It was it was smoked, but not overly so, because you don't want to kill a prime rib, right? And we ordered it medium rare, and it came out of perfect medium rare. My nose keeps itching. I'm sorry. I'm outside today, and, and uh, we had Nature Friday and Saturday, and now today, and uh, my allergies are going nuts. But anyway, the prime rib was just beyond amazing. It really was. I mean, they serve it with a little au jus and, um, and horseradish sauce, and it was just freaking incredible. So this is the part of the story where I'm going to lose some of you, uh, because some folks take offense when I start talking about religion. So I'm going to lose a few here. You know, I've even had some take offense that I even wear this while I do these videos. But, uh, you know, they're my videos. I can do whatever I damn well please. So, but here's the thing. Um, I'm going to give just a tad religious on you. I know some of you, uh, you know, uh, it seems like there are degrees of how people believe these days. There are those out there that think there's only one way to believe that you have to, you know, emphasize certain passages in the Bible. I just don't believe in that. Uh, but anyways, that aside, what I want to get at is just things were happening. We just felt like we had to get away. Uh, so the place we were going to end up in were the Rockbridge Trout Farm. Um, we looked it up online, and it looked like someplace Seamus would want to go. It was the main reason we wanted to go there in the first place. And we'd never had been there before, and it was something different. And we tried the trap, and it was kind of a lodge decor, and there were, you know, it was just something that Seamus would have really loved. And then we thought about staying in, in, in Gasville, and we didn't. And then we thought about staying in Harrison, but we didn't. And then we wanted to stay in Hollister, but couldn't. And it was, it was, um, uh, by sure accident, or if you want to use the word coincidence, uh, that somebody happened to be walking out of, of that salon at that particular moment to recommend we stay at uh, at the College of the Ozarks. And we get into the room, and it's kind of a lodge decor as well, but there's a, I don't know what you call it, just a kind of a, I don't know, you know, Big thing, <laughs> but anyway, on on it is uh, on, on each panel is a big moose, and and those of you that know me, um, you know Seamus Shay's nickname was Moose. It was like we kind of felt all day. We both, you know, sometimes we're 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 careful of how we talk to each other about how we reminisce, but sometimes things that really you know choke her up. I'm fine with things that choke me up. She's so, sometimes we're, we're careful about how we bring things up. But neither of us were bringing it up. But we we both had the feeling that he was with us all day. There were just little things that kept happening, you know. It, it's funny, though, you, you know, you, you have people that say they don't believe in coincidences. And they're going to look back at what I just said and say, well, Tom, that's just a lot of coincidence. Well, yeah, <laughs> I just think there were too many so-called coincidences that happened for it to be a coincidence. We, to be a moose in the room and just be everything that Seamus would like, the cookies, the fresh milk, the prime rib, I mean, just everything kind of fell into place. So we do feel like he that's where he was, excuse me, I scratch my nose, I apologize. We feel like that's where he wanted us to be all day long. He was just steering us around because we tried three places that we'd never been to before, you know, the trout farm, uh, the, uh, the Nemas Pizza in Gasville. The College of the Ozarks, you know, there's just things that, that happen. And so, I mean, I mean look, I, I know none of these things are proof in, in, in a supreme being or a God, if you will. Um, there's not enough for me to convince anybody. There's, there's certainly not proof. But, but since we left him, just shy of three years ago now, there's been a lot of things like that that happen that make, that really enforce what I believe. I know, I don't... I don't think it's the it's the God of the Bible because, in my opinion, the Bible is is pure mythology. It was it was designed. If you look into the history of the Bible and how it came about, it it was it was really designed as a weapon. I mean, it was designed to keep people in line. I don't think that exists, and it, and it frustrates me when people only cling 
to specific passages that uphold the prejudices that, that they have within themselves. Those kind of Christians bother me. They really do. But I believe there is something out there. And again, there's not enough for me to convince you that God is real, but it's enough to convince me. And that's enough because I don't have to convince you, right? There's just enough for me to believe. You know, there's an old saying, uh, there's, uh, there's no atheists in foxholes. Where there's, but there ought to be another one. And it should go something like, there's no atheist when you have a terminally ill child like, like we had, or there's no atheist when, when you lose a child too young. And Seamus was only 14. So you, some of, I know some of you are going to say, well, that's, you know, that makes you, if it comforts you, okay. But it's more than just comforts. It's because too much has happened. Too many little signs have happened in the last, you know, almost three years. So yes, you know, I, I, I do believe in some kind of God. I don't believe in it's it's the you know the <laughs> the mean chaotic God you read about in the Bible. I don't think that exists. I think that's just designed for certain people. But um, I do believe in in a, in a being of sorts, and, and I'm going to continue to. So anyway, I guess uh, I thought I was going to need three beers. Turns out I only need one. It took me a little longer to drink this than I usually do. Uh, there's oh. There is another part to the story. So I get to the room and we look around. And they've got this beautiful old Bible. Well, it looks like an old Bible anyway. I don't know how old it was. But, um, it's a beautiful, had a leather bound cover and it was just gorgeous. I pointed it to my wife when I when we first got there. I took a picture of it. Well, the next day, right after we ate breakfast, my wife uh, just opened it up. And she opened it up at a highlighted passage they had there. And um, hold on a second. Bear with me while I... I tell you here, bear with me. I should have had this looked up. I know, and I actually had it ready to go, and then I kind of got messed up. But bear with me. I'll be back. Excuse me. Goodness. Excuse me again. Goodness. It used to be something we'd say when we were kids. Excuse me. Excuse me from the bottom of my heart. But if I'd have waited any longer, it would have been a fart. Anyways, it was it was the uh, New International version of the Bible, and it was Psalms 31, a Psalm of David. And if you look look, if you go back and look at look at what that passage is, um, it just made perfect sense to what my wife and I are going through at the moment. You know, it, it was like it was meant to be. And, and my wife said, you know, I was really, you know, the way everything happened, I feel like we were meant to be here anyway. And I was really starting to relax. But after reading that, so now I really feel I, I, peaceful, you know. We just both started feeling good about decisions we knew we were going to have to make eventually. And it just made sense to us, you know. I mean, we're not looking forward to the next step of, of what might happen when we return to work. But at least now we're, we're kind of, you know, we're, we're ready for what's next, whatever that might be. So now I think I'm at the end of my story. I'll probably think of something else as soon as I turn it off. Uh, Oh, Mercy, let me take one more drink and I'll sign off with you. So, hey, I'm Tom the Beer Whisperer. You know, I do get a little frustrated sometimes on social media. You'll post something. There's always somebody got to say something snarky. You know, I you know, I don't know why we just can't let everybody be. Let everybody be who they are. You know, if you, if you think different than somebody else, they want to leave something snarky or nasty, nasty on your comments. I just don't know why people have to be that way. I don't know why people have to backstab and connive and manipulate, which is kind of what's been happening to my wife and I at work. I don't know why people just can't, can't be. And I think the answer to that is, or part of the answer is, I think some people aren't happy. And when they see people happy around them, they want to find ways to bring them down. And my wife and I went through a tragedy. We lost our son to leukemia too young. And, and we're both still struggling with that. So th there's really nothing else that can happen that's worse than that, you know. Even though, you know, what we're going through 
work wise is kind of rough and personal things. Um, there is nothing that's going to compare to that loss. So, you know, it's, it's I guess it is somewhat true the saying "What doesn't kill you makes you stronger," because you know we we are stronger. Um, losing Seamus was the worst possible thing. Losing a child would well, we would have been just as devastating if we lost our daughter. Just losing a child is devastating, and and to keep fighting back is it, it, tough. And then when something else happens, sometimes it seems important until you start looking at everything, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, in priority, maybe, I don't know. You start looking at things a certain way, then, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, it really isn't that important. So, hey, I'm Tony Beer Whisperer. I hope you all are, are doing all right. If you are going through something right now that's tough, you know, um, look at the signs around you. Sometimes there's something pointing you in a direction. That's what kind of happened to my wife and I. We were going through some hard times and and something pointed us in a direction that that let both of us know it's going to be okay in the long run. So there you go. I'm coming to Peer Whisper. We'll talk to you later. So we thought about staying at the Rockbridge Trout Farm, but like I said, nothing was open. We are getting tired, so we almost stayed in Gasville, uh, Gasville Arkansas. We decided to keep pushing on, and then we decided we did really want to stay in Harrison, so we were going to spend the night in Hollister, but the place we were going to spend the night at wasn't open. They weren't open till next weekend. So as we were leaving there, a um, the lady came out and recommended we go to College of the Ozarks. They have a hospitality program. They have some rooms. So we went there. So I, what you're seeing there are pictures from the room. Um, some of you that know me might know that uh, Seamus' nickname was Moose. When we got into the room and we saw that Moose, we, we, my wife and I both came to the conclusion that Seamus had been leading us there all day because nothing else was working. Uh, but the, the, food, the, the food that we had, the smoked trout and the Italian, was stuff he would have really loved. So when we got there, we just knew that's what we were supposed to be. So there's some pictures of the room there, some milk and, or some, some cookies. I meant to take a picture of the milk, but I didn't. Because they have a creamery on site there, and here's some pictures. Oh, excuse me, of the of the uh, gift shop there. It was just amazing. And then the last two shots were coming up on our, our pictures of the restaurant. My wife and I split a prime rib dinner, and I wish I had taken pictures of it, but I forgot to. There's the the gentleman that was playing piano, and I tried to take another shot of uh, of the dining room area there. So, and that was our weekend.